We are back again with the UNI-T model UT61E multimeter and its strange fault. And the video that I first uploaded about this certainly generated some response. A lot of people said that the selector switch was at fault, but I probably should have mentioned in that video that's not the case. I had already cleaned it. I even went and re-lubricated it, so that thing is fine. I got into contact with another guy over email and he sent me the schematic diagram of the meter as well as a link to the full data sheet of the IC that the meter uses. And I had a look at the function table and I compared the results that I was getting in the different modes, what the meter was doing to what it's supposed to do. And the simple conclusion is FC1 and FC4 are always low. They're always zero. And so consequently, the meter is not going to work properly. And if we take a look at the full function table that is only present in the data sheet, that also explains why we suddenly have a temperature measurement mode. As you can clearly see, FC1 and FC4 are low, and this mode, FC2 is high and FC3 is low, uh, that we have in the microamp mode. FC2 is high, FC3 is low, and FC1 and FC4 are low because they are faulty. We have FC1 through 4 on the chip right there, they all come into this function selector in which they will eventually disappear. The special thing about FC4 and FC1 are that they are connected via this little diode package, D4. So I'm thinking that maybe D4 is faulty. D4 is located on the board right there in the center of the picture. We also, by the way, have some test points. As you can see, we have uh, right there is FC2, FC1, 3, and then uh, there is also FC4 somewhere. That's up there. So I was able to uh, measure the faulty meter, and that's how I know a low is actually, it's not the, your classical TTL type of thing with a low is zero and a high is five volts. In this, it's a low is minus two volts and a high is zero. Anyway, I did do some measurements on D4 as well, and those were kind of inconclusive. Depending on the selected mode, it would either show up as shorted, partially shorted, or open. So, I guess I'll just unsolder that thing from the circuit board. And I think I found the problem. I unsoldered D4 and the meter's behavior has changed quite considerably. Obviously, it doesn't work right still, but now it actually measures resistance in most of the switch positions, which previously it would not do at all. The behavior of that thing is somewhat inconclusive. It certainly doesn't behave like I'd expect a diode to behave. The one side of it does actually display a voltage drop across it, so I'm thinking that's fine. The other one just measures pretty much shorted in both directions. I'd say that thing is toast. Okay, now this is looking slightly weird. I've temporarily replaced the diode package with a pair of Schottky diodes. But that actually does do something. I compared the function table in the schematic with the reality and it turns out that FC4 is now working the way it should again. However, FC1 still is stuck on zero. Now, keep in mind that in this case, a logical zero does not mean zero volts open contact or something. It means that there are minus two point something volts present on the chip. 
and so that would indicate some sort of a short circuit. So I went ahead, I took a look at the schematic and I followed the line, I followed the trace on the circuit board all the way from the chip all around to the function selector itself. I even went ahead and I removed the contact, the, the metal contact pieces from the selector switch to create an open contact situation here. Make sure that uh, the switch was not messed up in any kind of way, but it just remains stuck on minus two point something volts. And the thing is, now, the minus two point something volts, that's minus V battery up there, and the only way that that can possibly get into FC1 is through the switch. As you can see, there is no connection. And even this diode package right here, it just goes back into the switch and it's only going to connect in the farad, in the capacity mode. So that is the reason why if you remove these diodes, the only thing that doesn't work properly is the capacity mode. There is a brute force method to get the meter to work right, and that is to manually bring FC1 to be a logical one, meaning to bring it to zero volts, and that is to just short it out to ground. And I can do that. Um, we switch it to voltage. It now measures resistance, and if I now go ahead and short it out, it switches over to voltage and it works perfectly fine. Uh, the same thing is for millivolts. It tries measuring capacitance. I short it out to ground and we're in the millivolts mode. However, there is a strange behavior to this. If I do this once again, back to capacity, now millivolts, and it rises all the way up and it now shows overload. So I don't know if that might indicate that there is another problem in this meter somewhere. It does not seem to do the same thing in the volt mode. As you can see, it just stays at zero. Just for millivolts, doesn't, uh, doesn't work right. Uh, resistance works. Capacitance works. Hertz or frequency and duty cycle works. And that once again, microamps use our little trick, short it out, and it works. It shows a constant value, a relatively constant value. It does the same thing if I now switch over to milliamps. So there might be something wrong with that. And if I remove our lead again, it goes and measures resistance. Then, of course, the ampere mode finally works. So, at this point, I kind of ran out of ideas, so I'm just going to publish this video. And once again, if you have any helpful suggestions, what I could do, what I could check, what I could try, what I could test, please leave me a comment or send me an email whatever, any help is appreciated. Thanks for watching and see you again soon.